Hello guys, it's Mr. Wolfie, and uh, I'm trying to get the, right, the lighting right in here, and I can't because uh, I don't know. Well, see, my lizard is right, right over here, and he has to have his lights, so and because of the space in here, I have to try to use other lights to uh, dampen the light that's glaring, and no matter what I do, I can't get this glare off my glasses. But anyway, just kind of go with it. Hopefully this won't be a big deal. Okay, so I'm here to do a book review because I thought I'd start doing that because I notice a lot of people don't really seem to do that on YouTube, and I'm not really trying to target a market or anything. It's just, you know, it's I like to read, and I know a lot of other people like to read, and so I like to make uh, suggestions. You know, I've done a couple of videos about... I did like one about my uh, favorite Michael Crichton books, and I think I reviewed um, Dr. Ben Carson's book, A More Perfect Union, because I recently read that, and so there's that. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to get out of the, the lighting here, but really that's, that's my, my lizard's heat lamp is glaring, so I can't really do anything about that. But anyway, guys, I, I apologize. But um, So I recently read, or I recently finished reading, Nick Offerman's book, Gumption. Now, this book, you know, Nick Offerman is Ron Swanson on Parks and Rec. That's where most of you are probably going to recognize him. Um, and he's a really interesting character. Right? He's, he's uh, One thing that's amazing, though, is that he signed the book. We got this off of his uh, website, and he signed the book. It is awesome. It's like an autograph. Autograph Nick Offerman book. And uh, the whole time I was reading it, I also used a bacon bookmark. I thought that was applicable. So enough of that silly gushing and funny stuff. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the book without re revealing too much information for those I don't want to spoil things. It's basically a book about um, his favorite, or well, American individuals who inspire him or who he feels, I think the way he put it specifically in his book, uh, th people that you wish would run for office but no better than to do that. And some of them were presidents. Uh, the first, very first person in the book, without spoiling anything really, is actually George Washington, and he talks about what he likes about George Washington. And then he, he's he's not like biasedly positive. Usually, he has a tendency to talk about the faults of these individuals as well. It's very, it's a very interesting. Um, he did his research. It's a very interesting touch on history as well as his opinions of certain individuals and why they were so great and what makes, uh, you know, what qualifies as gumption, which is what the book is about. It's about the, uh, gumption is his judgment of the quality of the character. You know, it's, it's, I worded that very poorly and I apologize. But anyway, uh, while reading this, actually, just to kind of touch on this one thing, I, I don't know, I got... I, I, I used to write a lot. I used to actually have a book about half done. It was a big fantasy thing. You know, I was I had read a bunch of. I was really into um, uh, like Lord of the Rings style fantasy stuff back in high school, and I just kind of was doodling around, and I had a really neat little book idea, and it was wow, my lizard's going bonkers. Uh, I had a little. It, it, anyway, long story short, it got deleted when my one of my computers crashed, so I lost months and years of writing on a book and so anyway uh, but this book inspired me to start jotting down my ideas and I have like almost an entire notebook full uh, in pencil of things that I intend to eventually put in my own book it's just kind of my own thoughts on things mostly it's centered around nutrition and uh, uh, social issues and just kind of it's not too far removed from the kind of things he was talking about there. I don't know. It's, it's basically, if I had a different opinion or if I had a comparative opinion, I put it in my own words just for future reference because, you know, you, when I read a lot, I get a lot of things going up in my noodle brain. Um, one fun thing about the book, without before I go into the uh, my real thoughts about the book, is it's really funny. And it's really clever because there's there's literally running gags in the book. It's it's a it's a his, history and opinion based writing style, but then randomly he'll recall a joke or gag that was in another chapter and touch back on it. And by the end of the book, you've got it's almost like a an Easter egg hunt for when when is this gag gonna keep going and when is it gonna stop? I don't know how to explain that other than you just need to read it and that it's fun. It's a fun book to read. All right, so some topics that I wrote down to discuss. Uh, was there, I, I 
tend to agree with just about it, most everything that goes on in here, we're on the same page about. But there's a few things that I'm a little, uh, like, for instance, he brings up the wage gap, uh, the, the gender wage gap. And I think it's due to uh, his not being very interested in being on the internet much, which is a good thing, and I actually approve of his dis general distaste of and, you know, living on technology. I don't. My phone is like six, seven years old. My, I use a computer until it literally breaks down. I have the same iPod I've had since 2004. Uh, five? Four? I can't remember. It's the very first iPod shuffle. Anyway, I don't, I'm not into the whole buy the newest thing every month it comes out. That's stupid to me. It's a waste of money. So, he doesn't spend much time on the internet. I don't think he's seen things like Dr. Thomas Sewell, who pretty much it, see, the wage gap exists because of the way they did the study, but it's not what a lot of people think it is. It's not women literally getting paid less than men. It's women having to be making less than men because of all these circumstances. And I'm not the one to explain that to you, really. You should go watch Dr. Thomas Sewell or uh, Christina Hoff Summers has a very good video about it. Um, basically, it's if women had made different decisions than they ended up making, and men had made different decisions than they, than they ended up making, the jobs would have evened out. If more women worked man jobs, then it would be evened out, and you know, vice versa. So really what the problem is, is that very specific jobs make money and others don't make as much money, and then a whole bunch of other factors go into it. So really, you know, I guess what it comes down to is, well, there's it's illegal to pay women less than men, is basically what I'm getting at. There is actually a law that's been, that was put in place by Kennedy, if I'm not mistaken, so it's been decades. And you can make the argument that the wage gap exists because if you take every single woman and every single man in the United States, then men are just a little bit higher, like 20, 30 cents. But it's because of, like I said, the factors that rela are related to the choices of jobs and things like that. Also, he likes Hillary Clinton. I'm not even gonna go into that. It's, uh, ugh, no, she's. Mm -mm. There, I, <laughs> I am neither a Democrat nor a Republican. I have been openly critical of both sides. I consider myself a libertarian, and actually, he's you know still functionally libertarian. I don't see how anyone can like Hillary Clinton. Ugh. The stuff that she's done lately. Anyway, I'm not gonna get too much into politics on that one. Um, also, just some general things about the Second Amendment we disagree on. I'm not going to touch on that. That's You'll have to read the book and then uh, come up with some stuff for yourself. Um, I am very, I very much like the hard work and vocational um, job related information that he presents. Uh, a lot of his people that are writers are pro working with your hands and I think that's a lost art um, because a lot of the jobs a lot of people going to college these days are fighting over jobs that are specialty jobs related to engineering, you know, law, doctorate kind of things. And that's a very, very good pursuit, except that when you flood the market with this, and most of you are just kind of mediocre in regards to your grades and your function and your, you know, how you're uh, placed, then you end up not getting anywhere near the job that you were going for, and then you end up having just tons of money flushed down the drain because you can't become a doctor with a C average but you went ahead and got the student loans and do you see the problem whereas a vocational job is a job that you learn to do as you go and you never have a problem finding out some way to use that ability so woodworking uh, metalworking mechanics related things it's everybody needs that kind of stuff in the long run and that's where all the money is you can sell freaking furniture for tens of thousands of dollars if you make it yourself out of fine woods and things. So, just lean towards that, maybe, and maybe we'll fix some of these problems. I'll, his thoughts on government and the way things are going, we're right there on the same page. Uh, yeah, I, I can't argue with any, but pretty much anything he said, really. Um, I really like... That one of his people that he brought up was Michael Pollan. I'm a very fan of Michael Pollan. I had to read The Omnivore's Dilemma for a class two years ago? I can't remember. And I just fell in love with the book. It's The Omnivore's Dilemma. I've, I've only touched on, uh, what's the other one? The Food. I hadn't actually read it. I, what is the name of that one? 
In defense of food. Is that it? An Eater's Manifesto. Yeah, I haven't read that one all the way through yet. I just kind of like peeked at it and I'm on, it's, it's on my list of things to get and read. Um, so I love Michael Pollan. Genius. Kind of what I want to write about in terms of my book. And there's actually, in case you're wondering, going to be an entire chapter on the eating habits of dinosaurs and <laughs> the evolution of eating. You know, I, I thought that would be fun because I'd like to talk about that stuff anyway. And I love stegosauruses. So it's going to be like an entire chapter of why stegosaurus is amazing. Am I talking too much about myself here? I'm sorry. Um, half the people in the book I never even heard of. And it was wonderful reading about them and learning about them. Uh, for instance, Frederick Law Lee Olmsted, Frederick Law Olmsted. I said it right the first time. Uh, the man who, or one of the men who, was directly involved in creating Central Park. Very fascinating chapter in the book. Um, Tom Laughlin. I was aware of the Legend of Billy Jack, but I've never actually seen it. My dad has talked about it before. It's one of his favorite movies. So we're working on actually finding a copy now to watch because, see, he introduced me to Tom Laughlin and. Legend of Billy Jack. This book is fantastic. Um, Carol Burnett. I love Carol Burnett. I, love, I, I, I grew up watching Carol Burnett and uh, Lucy. Uh, Lucille Ball. Like I love Lucy and things reruns on uh, TV Land because when I was a kid is when they introduced TV Land, which was playing classic shows at the end of at the time it was like Nick at Night. It was after uh, Nickelodeon cartoons. They would start showing older TV shows, and then it became its own channel called TV Land and. Yeah, so I love that kind of stuff. Um, Willie Nelson, freaking awesome. Can't argue with the stuff he says. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. Um, and then, of course, I love Conan O'Brien. I would rather watch Conan O'Brien than any of the late night anybody's. Like, he's always been kind of on my level of this is what I think is interesting. And I had no idea just how intelligent and well-rounded Conan O'Brien actually was as far as he has a degree from Harvard in American history. It's amazing that I never do that. Um, I guess I don't really have anything else to say. I guess in terms of actual, a lot of his stuff is related to, I would almost say, use the word hippie, but not really. It's more like, you know, uh, neo-hippie, uh, peace and love brother kind of stuff. And I'm on the page with that, but I would think I'm more on the spectrum of Nick Offerman to Ron Swanson. I'm closer to Ron Swanson. So I, I was kind of surprised at the differences between him and the character, actually, although I was equally surprised at just how similar they actually are. Very fascinating. I, I would highly recommend this book. Um, I'm not going to give it any kind of scale. I don't think that's a very smart thing to do. It's just, if, if, you were, if you were interested in knowing if something's worth reading and you were thinking that I would tell you if it was worth reading or not, I will tell you that this is definitely worth reading and you might like it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, I have not read his first book, but now I intend to get it because uh, this was actually given to me as a gift for Christmas because of my uh, love of Parks and Rec and Ron Swanson as a character. So um, that is all I have here to discuss. And I guess as far as things to bring up, in the future, I don't know when I'm going to finish it. I've started reading John Wayne, The Life and Legend by Scott Iman. So, it's a very large book. It'll take me a little while. I'm only like 40-ish pages in. So, you're talking probably a, over a week, given my current schedule and the inability to read freely. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are tempted to pick up the book. Nick Offerman... Gumption. You can go to his website, which is, uh, I don't know the actual website. I will link it because we went to the website to get it. And anyway, it's the Offerman Wood Shop. He owns a uh, woodworking shop in addition to his acting and everything. Um, and you can order it off of there. You can order it off the website. I'll put it in the, in the description. Anyway, guys, peace out. This has been Miss Wolfie. Love you guys.